consultants at the Walmart site send in a sample for 8270. They get a result back that tells them that they have 70 parts per billion of 2-methylnaphthalene. Where does that number come from? One way to approach it is this. We take a liter, this is like a big graduated cylinder, the liter mark is right here. We fill it up, we put in 200 milligrams of 2-methylnaphthalene. 200 milligrams in a liter is 200 parts per million. This implies that there's a million milligrams in a liter, which in fact there is. 200 milligrams is two-tenths of a gram, which is like a spatula full. It's not difficult to weigh. Our sample comes in in a small vial. We subject a microliter from this, a microliter of the sample from the site to our chromatographic analysis, and we get a response factor of 237. We subject a microliter of our standard to our chromatographic analysis, and we get a response factor of 1239. The way I do this is I say, okay, start with the 200, multiply it by the little number, divide it by the big number, and we find out that our sample is 70.5 parts per billion 2-methylnaphthalene. The 8270 list has 70 compounds. It's more than just 2-methylnaphthalene. So the way to, using the same approach, the way to do it is simply to put 200 milligrams of phenol, 200 milligrams of indine, 200 milligrams of dinitrophenol, 200 milligrams of 2-ethyl-exylphthalate, uh, 200 milligrams of dinophyl phthalate, 200 milligrams of benzidine, 200 milligrams of uh, straight naphthalene, etc., etc., etc. And then we would end up with the same approach. We'll now quantitate for all 70 compounds. A kind of an important little, little observation is that as we add 200 milligrams of this and 200 milligrams of that, our volume is going to go up over a, a liter. And we don't want it over a liter. We want the the volume to stay at one liter, which means that in actual practice you'd add the 200 milligrams, 200 milligrams, 200 milligrams, and then you'd bring it up to volume at one liter so it stays at one liter. We have our standard at 200. We want to make a calibration curve with this 200. The calibration curve is at 20, 50, 80, 120, and 160. So we simply dilute the 200 down to these five levels. It's pretty straightforward. We need to pick a volume. Let's pick a volume that'll fit in these jars. It's, it's arbitrary. Let's say 25 mils. So we want to, make, to dilute our 200 standard down to a 160, and we want 25 mils total. So we go to our concentration times volume is equal to concentration times volume, and uh, 25 mils total. So we do the calculations and we find out that we want to put 5 mils of this plus 20 mils of the solvent for the, for the 160. For the 120, we want 10 plus 15. For the 80, we want 15 plus 10. For the 50, we want 6.25 mils of this plus 18.75 mils of solvent. For the 20, this is pretty diluted now, we want 2.5 mils of this and 22.5 mils of the solvent. And this will give us our standard. So now to run the initial calibration, we simply run an injection of this, an injection of this, an injection of this, an injection of this, an injection of this. And I know when I was, I wasn't a very smart kid, and, and I would be confused by this big jar and these little jars. And I'd go, but wait a minute, this is a big jar and this is a small jar. It's one microliter of each, no matter what you do. So the size of it doesn't matter. Like I said, I, I, I wasn't a very, a very um, smart kid. This is an approach which would work. I'd see no scientific particular reason why this approach wouldn't work. There are problems with it, and it is never actually done this way. The problems are 
related to the chemicals themselves. The 8270 is a list of hazardous waste. The compounds on the 8270 list are carcinogenic and toxic. These are like bad guys. You know, you don't go out and buy a container of methylene, of um, 2-methylmaphylene. You don't go buying benzidine. Well, let's buy some 2-nitrophenol. Uh, let's buy some, no. You don't buy this stuff. Anything that goes into the lab is eventually going to be hazardous waste. Any, any hazardous compound that's produced ends up as hazardous waste. So you don't want this stuff hanging around your lab. And then another factor is that a container of this at 200 parts per million would last a laboratory about 100 years. You use a microliter at a time. And another point, and this is a, um, a, on a technical scientific side, is that the standards are unstable when they're mixed. Most of the 8270 compounds are very stable chemically, but some of them are not. And when they're mixed together, some of the compounds will combine with other compounds. And the result of this is that the, the, con is that the, the standards are not stable when they're mixed. You mix them, and they're good. The next day, they're good. The third day, th they're probably still good. But a standard that's a week old, they start to break down, and you really can't use them when they get real old. You have to constantly be making them up fresh. The way this works in a real laboratory is that the standards are purchased at 2,000 parts per million. They, are, they come in a mix so that they come purchased and diluted to 2,000 parts per million, but they're mixed, they're, they're separated such that they will be stable in the mix. They're not stable when they're mixed together, but this, they're separated and put in groups that will be stable together. Like, for example, the benzidine is typically separated all by itself. The phenols will all be together. The PAHs will all be together. The mix consists of five very small break-off vials. The five vials together form the 8270 calibration curve. The way this starts out is that the analyst gets the five break-off vials and carefully labels five autosampler vials. The, the autosampler vials, the most important label is the primary control number to go into the, um, the log for the EPA. This is EPA mandated and everything has to be documented. So the first thing you do is document the standards for the EPA. They're given an ascension number on the jar and then an ascension number in a book. And so they would have ascension number um, and, and then maybe a label for what it is and maybe not. And then the, the description goes into the book. So the, the vials are broken off transferred into the appropriate vial. So the first one's broken off, transferred. Second one's broken off, transferred. Third one's broken off, transferred. Fourth one's broken off, transferred. Fifth one's broken off, transferred. It has to be done such, such that they don't get contaminated. We have these five standards. We want to dilute them down to make a calibration curve. And we want them to have a half a mil total. So remember, we picked the 25 mils. We said, well, let's make 25 mils. This is like, has to be a half a mil. So we want a half a mil of these guys mixed together for 20. We want a half a mil of these guys mixed together for a, a 50. Half a mil mixed together for an 80. Half a mil mixed together for a, a 120. And a half a mil mixed together for a 160. So how are we going to do this? Uh, let's start with start with our 20. Because we want, we want to make a 20 standard. And we want a half a mil total. And we want to put it in one of these. OK, we want a 20 standard. We want a 20 standard. We want it made, these guys diluted all appropriately such that it comes out as 20 parts per million. These are at 2,000 parts per million.
We want a 20 parts per million standard. We want to dilute these five guys down equally so that when we're done, we'll have 20 parts per million and a half a mil total. Okay, this is how it works. Concentration times volume is equal to concentration times volume. We want 0 0.5 mils as the final volume. We want 20 parts per million as the final concentration. We're starting out with 2,000 parts per million, and the volume is our variable. So we do the calculations, and we find that we want the volume to be 0 0.005 milliliters. 0 0.005 milliliters? 0 0.005 milliliters is 5 microliters. That's not a problem. We got a syringe that'll nicely do 5 microliters. So we put 5 microliters of this one in it, 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 and 5 microliters of this one in it. And we're done with that one. Okay, set that one aside. Okay, we need one that's 50 parts per million. So we want a vial that's 50 parts per million of each of these. 50 parts per million. And we want 0.5 milliliters when we're done. So let's take a look at this. Concentration times volume is equal to concentration times volume. Our final volume is 0.5 milliliters. Our final concentration is 50. Our initial concentration is 2,000. How, how much do we need to add? Well, we end up with 0 0.0125 milliliters. That's 12.5 microliters. It's not a problem. 12.5 microliters. We take this guy, put 12.5 microliters from this one, 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 in here, and we're done. Moving forward. We want to make an 80. Take a vial, label it. This also needs to go in your um, EPA um, standards control log, incidentally. This needs to be logged in also. Label it as an 80. How much do we need? Well, same thing. Concentration times volume is equal to concentration times volume. 80 times 0.5 milliliters, concentration times volume, 2,000 parts per million. What's our volume going to be? Our volume is going to be 0 0.020, which is 20 microliters. So we put in 20 microliters of this, 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 and we're done. So going to the next one, we got 120, which is 30 microliters. So 30 microliters of each one. And our 160 is 40 microliters of each one. Okay, label, you know, labeled and everything. So we end up with our five points. We've added each of the five to each of our five standards. So we're done with these. We cap these off real good, store them away somewhere where they're safe. They're expensive. And we have our 20, our 50, our 80, our 120, and our 160. These are all nicely labeled. They go in the um, our control log, incidentally, for the EPA. But we're not quite done with them, are we? The ones, we need half a mil for each one. So the 160, we have added 200. We need to add 300 to it to dilute it up to 500 microliters. In theory, you could bring it up to volume at a half a mil. But in actual fact, you really can't do that. You need to uh, just calculate and add it. So we add 300 mils to this 160. We add 350 mils to the 120. We add 400 mils to the 80. We add 437 mils to the 50. And we add 475 mils to the 20. And then we're done. 
So let me, let me give you a quick walkthrough on how to actually do this. The way this is actually done is, I, I think this is kind of an important. It's a trick, but it's not anything It's completely insurmountable. So starting from scratch, let me give it to you as a lab tech, as a, as a veteran lab tech, let me give you the technique you use. You get a solid displacement pipe pad. Let's start with the, uh, start with the 20. Get a solid displacement pipe pad. Turn it so that it, so that it'll give you five microliters. You take the first one, draw five microliters, put it in the first vial, labeled of course. Go through a series of rinses. The rinses are dirty, not so dirty, clean, clean, super clean. So you go through, and you're done with the first one. Take the second one, take up five microliters, add it go through the series of rinses, take the next one, add it, go through the series of rinses, take the next one, add it, go through the series of rinses, take the last one, add it, go through the series of rinses. Okay, so this one's done. Take your, your 50. You want to dial the 50 to 12.5. Dial your solid displacement pipette to 50. Go 50. Go through your rinses. Go um, 50, go through your series of rinses. 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 I like solid displacement pipettes because they're easy to clean. You can just you can just reuse the same sleeve, just clean it, which you really can't do very well. The alternative would be to use a disposable um, pipette tip. And then the way to add the methylene chloride to bring it up to volume at 0.5 is to get a pipette, automated adjustable pipette with one milliliter, dial in the first volume you want, air out the pipette. The methylene chloride is very volatile and it'll tend to want to blow out of the, um, out of the pipette and mess up your volumes. So let it come to equilibrium, the whole, let the pipette come to equilibrium and then do the first one, punch in your new number on the, on the pipette, do the second one, punch in the new number, do the third one, punch in the number, do the fourth one, punch in the number, do the fifth one, punch in the number, and throw the pipette tip away. It's all methylene chloride, so you don't need to use a bunch of different tips. So we have our five points. We have our 20, 50, 80, 120, 160. We get some samples in to run. So we line them up to, we have a prep blank, it has a half a mil in it, we have three samples, they each have a half a mil in them, and we have a couple of spike samples, a couple of quality control samples, they each have a half a mil in them. The half a milliliter is extremely important. The half a milliliter is not an approximately a half a milliliter, it's exactly a half a milliliter, and you should be able to look across them and see that they all have the exact same volume, exact exact same volume. It's not any great trick, but, but it's important to understand that it's very important that the volumes be right. Now, the last step is we take a an internal standard. The internal standard comes at 4,000 parts per million, and we put five microliters in each one. So we put five microliters of internal standard in each one of them. Remember that the internal standard quantitation is based upon the ratio of the internal standard to the total volume. So the volume has to be exactly 0.5, and the internal standard has to be exactly five microliters. So be careful. This is a good time to be as careful as you can. And now, um, like next week, you need to make a continuing calibration standard at 50. Just follow the same, follow the same directions. Take a vial, put in 12.5 microliters in each one, add 437.5 microliters to bring it up to 500, add five microliters exactly of the same internal standard, and you can, hit the iCal every time 
if the other variables are, are correct. If your GC is working properly, you can hit the eye count every time. It's um, it's fairly, it's actually pretty satisfying. The, the, the initial calibration is complicated, but when it comes out, which it will if you're careful, it's cool. Thank you.